guys. Good morning. Um, today, we're going to be starting a brand new book for our homework. It is called Who Was Jacques Cousteau? So um, this is a man that we have been learning about, and we're going to continue to learn about him in this uh, biographical book. We're going to read chapter one and two today. Who was Jacques Cousteau? We have our table of contents with our page numbers and all the different chapters and chapter headings that will talk about his life. Who was Jacques Cousteau? In 1920, 10-year-old Jacques Cousteau and his family were living in New York City. Jacques and his older brother, Pierre Antoine, liked playing stickball in the street outside their apartment on West 95th Street. But besides stickball, Jacques was not a sports fan. He was skinny and sickly and shy around other kids. Pierre was his best friend. That summer, the brothers were sent away to camp in Vermont. And one day, while horseback riding, Jacques' horse threw him to the ground. Jacques refused to ride for the rest of the summer. Jacques was sent to the lake in order to remove leaves and branches from the water so the other boys could have a clean swimming space. This so-called punishment would change Jacques' life forever. Jacques dived to the bottom of the lake and opened his eyes, hoping to see the underwater world around him. But the water was too muddy. It stung his eyes, and he could barely see past his own two hands. Regardless, Jacques wanted to linger beneath the surface. He held his breath for as long as he could. He even tried breathing through a hollow reed, a long, sturdy piece of grass, but that didn't work very well. Jacques felt free swimming in the water. He welcomed the opportunity to visit the lake every day that summer. As an adult, Jacques pioneered new techniques for diving, breathing, filming, and even living underwater. He outgrew his shyness to become a worldwide celebrity, best-selling author, Oscar-winning movie maker, and a television star who brought breathtaking images of ocean life to millions of people around the world. Chapter 1, On the Move. On June 11, 1910, in a small French market town 50 miles from the Atlantic coast, Jacques Cousteau was born. Soon after, Jacques' parents, Daniel and Elizabeth, and older brother Pierre, returned to their home in Paris. Daniel was an attorney and personal assistant to an American millionaire living there. His job required him to travel with his boss constantly. The Cousteaus were on the move for much of Jacques' early years. One of his first childhood memories was being rocked to sleep on a train. Although Jacques was weak and often sick, he was determined. On a family trip to Duville, a fashionable seaside resort, Jacques learned to swim. He was only four. When World War I broke out in 1914, German soldiers invaded France. Daniel's boss returned to America. Jacques' father was out of a job. German forces surrounded the city, but the Parisians, with help from the British allies, fought back. Hundreds of taxi cabs drove back and forth between the city and the front lines, delivering soldiers and supplies. The French government left Paris, moving France's capital to the city of Bordeaux. The Germans never conquered Paris, but life in the city was difficult as the war raged on. Food, water, and electricity were rationed. People were allowed only a certain amount of each resource. German aircraft, called Zeppelins, dropped bombs on the city. So Jacques is in the middle of a war that is going on where he lives. Zeppelins, named for their inventor, Colin Ferdinand von Zeppelin, these enormous airships were hundreds of feet long. They flew higher than most planes at the time. Resembling large blimps, they were made of hard steel skeletons covered with fabric, with bags of gas inside the skeletons providing lift, and engines outside thrusting the ship forward. Zeppelins bombed London and Paris throughout World War I. Although their aim was poor, they could drop many bombs in a short amount of time. After the war ended, Zeppelins were used like the commercial airplanes of today, flying people back and forth across the Atlantic. In 1937, when the fiery explosion of the Hindenburg airship in New Jersey killed 36 people, the age of the airship quickly came to an end. So this is similar to the airplanes that were uh, dropping bombs where Jacques was a little kid living with his family. 
When Jacques was seven years old, he and his family moved back to their village. In the spring of 1918, the Germans made one final push towards Paris. This time, the Americans were there to help the French and the British. The Germans were pushed back once again. By the end of the year, a ceasefire was called, and in 1919, the war ended. After the war, Daniel got a job working for another American millionaire, Eugene Higgins. In 1920, the Cousteaus moved to New York City with Mr. Higgins. On the eighth day voyage across the Atlantic, 10-year-old Jacques began to come out of his shell. He made friends with the crew and explored every corner of the huge ship. In America, Jacques' brother was his only real friend. Pierre... Uh, like to be called P-A-C, which were his three initials. He would be called Jack. It sounded very American. Jacques did not like school or sports. He liked to build things, like model planes and boats, and he liked to take them apart to see how they worked. The first summer, Jacques and his brother went to camp in Vermont. That's where Jacques first began to imagine what it would be like to move and breathe freely underwater. In 1923, the Cousteaus moved back to France. Jacques saved three months' allowance and bought a used Path Baby, a hand-cranked movie camera. As soon as Jacques got home, he took the camera apart and he put it back together again. This is what our camera, his camera looked like. With a camera in his hand, Jacques finally shook off his shyness. Looking through the lens, he could talk to anyone, even pretty girls. Jacques made friends and they made short movies together. At 14, Jacques filmed his first full-length feature, A Cousin's Wedding. Jacques still did not like school. His grades were bad, and he was more interested in making movies than sitting quietly in the classroom. When he was caught breaking windows in one of the school's stairwells, Jacques said he was only conducting an experiment. He was testing the difference between a rock that was thrown weakly and one that was thrown forcefully. Jacques conducted this experiment on 17 windows. He was expelled from school. Jacques' parents took away his camera and sent him to a strict boarding school 250 miles away. Strangely, the school's harsh rules suited Jacques, and without his camera to distract him, he blossomed. In 1929, 19-year-old Jacques graduated from high school. The next year, he joined the French Navy. With his trusty camera back in hand, Jacques Cousteau was ready for a life of adventure. Chapter 2, Shattered Dreams The Navy trained Jacques to be a gunnery officer. That meant that he was in charge of all the weapons on the battleship. After graduating with honors, Jacques spent a year aboard a Navy ship with his fellow cadets. They circled the globe touring the world. This was a requirement of the French Navy, and it was an exciting one for Jacques. Here he is, 19 years old, just finished high school, and he's going into the Navy. And here he is with his fellow cadets on his Navy warship. From pearl divers in the South Pacific to the shores of Japan, Jacques recorded everything with his camera. He even met some Hollywood movie stars while docked in California. After returning to France, he edited his footage and showed it to his family and friends. But Jacques didn't stay home for long. Here he is, still recording while he's in the Navy. But Jacques didn't stay home for long. In 1933, the Navy sent him back to the Far East. While on a visit to Japan, Jacques met a French business, businessman named Henry McQuire. Mr. Men, Mr. Henry McQuire ran a company called Air Liquid. It produced and sold compressed air. Compressed air is air that has been condensed or pushed together and stored in a container under high pressure. In the real world, air moves about freely, but when pressure is applied, a large amount of, amount of air can be pushed into a small can or a tank like this. Jacques thought that perhaps one day Mr. McGuire's compressed air could be used to breathe underwater. It would work better than a hollow reed. Mr. McGuire's daughter, 17-year-old Simone, had been raised in the south of France and Japan. She, was, she spoke both French and Japanese. Her grandfathers and great-grandfather had all been admirals in the Navy. She longed for a life at sea full of adventure. She and Jacques barely spoke when they first met, but they would meet again soon. When Jacques returned to France, he requested a transfer to the Navy Aviation Corps. He wanted to become a pilot. Jacques loved to fly. He took photos of the earth from high in the sky. After six months, he had nearly finished all his coursework and training. And then something terrible happened one 
rainy night in 1936. Jacques borrowed his family's zippy sports car to attend a friend's wedding in the mountains. While approaching a bend in the twisty mountain road, the car's headlights went out. Jacques crashed into a ditch. Luckily, there were no other cars on the road, or Jacques might have been hit. But this also meant there was no one to stop him and help him. Jacques thought he was going to die. Walking and crawling through the pain, he found his way to a nearby house. When he finally reached a hospital, the doctors told him his arm had been shattered. Bones were broken in different places, and one of his arms had a bad infection. The doctors wanted to cut off Jacques' arm to stop the spread of the infection, but Jacques refused, saying that he would rather die than not have both of his arms. Amazingly, after months of painful physical therapy, Jacques started to show progress, but one of his arms remained twisted for the rest of his life. Jacques' dreams of becoming a pilot were over. Here is that accident that we learned about in the undersea life of Jacques Cousteau. Chapter three, we will do that one for tomorrow's homework. Hope you enjoyed listening to Who Was Jacques Cousteau? We learned a little bit more about him. Again, we're still connecting it back to our book that we read in class, The Undersea Life of Jacques Cousteau. See you all later. Bye.